Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my kitchen for another video. My name is Derek from Simonite Nutrition and today I'm going to be telling you guys the truth about plant protein. <laughs> so questions about protein are still the most commonly asked questions that I get. Derek, how much protein do you get? How much do you think I need? Is there enough to build muscle? Is it complete protein? What are some of the best sources? So today in this video, I'm going to answer some of those questions and towards the end, we're going to look at some of my favorite sources and we're going to go over the nutrients that are in those and have a closer look at them. So what is protein? And I know a lot of you guys are gonna know the answer to this already, but just so we're all on the same page, protein is one of the three macronutrients. And the macronutrients are the nutrients that we obtain calories and energy from. And those are carbohydrates, fat, and of course, protein. So a lot of people think that protein's only role in the body is to aid in muscle repair and also muscle growth. But there's actually so many other functions that protein has in the body, so I thought it was worth it just to kind of talk about that for just a quick second. So taken directly from the Harvard School of Public Health, protein is found throughout the body in muscle, bone, skin, hair, and virtually every other body part or tissue. It makes up the enzymes that power many chemical reactions and the hemoglobin that carries oxygen in your blood. At least 10,000 different proteins make you what you are and keep you that way. So it's not just for gains after all, it has many other functions as well. Who'd have thought, hey? Uh, so we also know that protein is made up of amino acids. And this article actually explains it really well, so I'm gonna continue reading from it. Protein is made from 20 plus basic building blocks called amino acids. Because we don't store amino acids, our bodies make them in two different ways, either from scratch or by modifying others. Nine amino acids, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine are known as the essential amino acids, and those must come from food. So you may have heard the notion that protein from plant foods is incomplete. And while it may be true that some plant foods are lower in a few amino acids than others, these differ in each food and they're easily made up for and complemented by just simply eating a variety. And now I've said it before on this channel and I'll say it again, but all plant foods contain all nine essential amino acids, period. Don't trust me, look it up for yourself, go on Chronometer or MyFitnessPal or whatever and type in a few hundred calories of any plant food and I guarantee you will see every single essential amino acid represented. Our body also breaks down protein and recycles amino acids, so focusing on properly combining at each meal is not necessary. And to be honest with you, it requires no thought at all. As long as you're eating a good variety of food and sufficient calories, you will have no problem getting enough amino acids. So how much protein do we actually need? Now this is gonna vary from person to person depending on a few factors, age, uh, your weight, your caloric intake, your level of activity or exercise, if you're weight training or not, uh, but one thing for sure is that most of us think we need more than we actually do. And a lot of us are taking in more than we probably need. The National Academy of Medicine recommends that adults get a minimum of 0.8 grams of protein for every kilogram of body weight per day, or just over seven grams for every 20 pounds of body weight. So for a 140 pound person, uh, and that is just under my weight, that means about 50 grams of protein per day. And for a 200 pound person, that means about 70 grams of protein each day. So I don't know where it started, but we have become obsessed with protein. And it's definitely perpetuated by the media and by advertising. I mean, you see it on like packaging and on food labels and in magazines and everything like that. And it's having people believe that if you could just eat more protein, eat like a bodybuilder, you're gonna look lean and you're gonna be muscular and everything is gonna be great. But it's just not the truth. And it's sad, you know, it really is because so often I, you know, I get DMs and I talk to people that are just average Joes that work like a nine to five job, they hit the gym a few times a week, and they're constantly making their food decisions based on if it has a lot of protein in it or not. And this isn't how we wanna be making our food choices. Just because something is high in protein doesn't mean that it's healthy, it doesn't mean it's gonna to lead to weight loss, it doesn't mean it's gonna to lead to muscle gain. There's so many other factors uh, involved in health and in muscle growth and in good athletics that protein is just one small factor. What is holding most people back from reaching their goals is their lifestyle and not a lack of protein. I mean, we often sit at our jobs for eight to 10 hours a day and we think that a quick hour in the gym and some high protein foods is gonna have us looking like a superhero. And that is just not the case. Sedentary lifestyle, overeating, too many processed foods, and just not going hard enough in the gym or consistently enough with the exercise regime that you have is really what's holding most people back. 
So I'm sure there's at least a few of you sitting there right now being like, Derek, I'm pretty sure that as an athlete, I need more than that 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And you are right, athletes do need more protein. And if you guys haven't seen the movie, The Game Changers, I strongly recommend that you go and watch that because they have so much information about protein requirements and uh, you know how plant proteins affect our body and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and it's really, really interesting. And actually on their website, they have a really well researched and cited article on the protein needs of athletes. So I'm gonna reference that here. Athletes and other people who work out and train regularly often require more protein, depending on what type of sport and activity they engage in. Endurance athletes like distance runners and cyclists require about 50% more protein, 1.2 grams to 1.4 grams per kilogram, than the average person to help them recover and perform their best. However, most endurance athletes naturally consume this amount since they typically eat more calories and therefore more protein. Bodybuilders and strength athletes seeking to make gains as quickly as possible can require twice as much protein or more 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram than the general population. For these people, keeping a close eye on how much protein is consumed over the course of the day becomes more important, regardless of whether it comes from animal or plant-based sources. So if you've watched any of my What I Eat In A Day videos where I analyze the nutrients at the end, I typically get about 100 grams of protein in around 24 to 2500 calories. And at 64 to 65 kilograms, that puts me at getting around 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. So I'm definitely not at that high end of the scale. And as you can see, I've definitely managed to put on and maintain a decent amount of muscle. And if you go back to my early What I Eat In A Day videos, when I first started to do calisthenics and started to put on muscle, I was only getting between like 65 and 75 grams of protein per day back then. So I was eating way less back then and was still able to put on muscle. So what's important to note about these grams per kilogram of body weight numbers, and this is where most people mess up when they're trying to figure out their protein calculations, especially for people that are overweight and they're trying to lose weight, is that these numbers should be based on our ideal lean body weight. And the reason being is because fat doesn't have the same metabolic requirements and needs as muscle, tissue, and organs do. So it really shouldn't be accounted for in that equation. Does that make sense? Basically, if you are 100 kilograms and your ideal lean body weight for your age, height, and sex is 75 kilograms, you're gonna be wanting to calculate your protein requirements based on the 75 kilograms and not the 100. So you're just gonna be struggling to get these uh, protein amounts and it's really not gonna be benefiting you at all. But if you are trying to lose weight out there, first of all, good on you for taking control of your health and starting to do something about it. And I know these numbers are like really fun to play around with and, and try and you know hit your protein goals and stuff like that. But honestly, the most important factors if you are trying to lose weight are eating whole plant-based foods, eating in a slight caloric deficit just by a few hundred calories, and then of course, exercising. You wanna be doing some type of exercise uh, whatever one that you like, whatever one you're gonna stick with, whether it's you know swimming, riding a bike, weight training, karate, skateboarding, whatever it is, just get out there and stick with it and stay consistent. I don't think that people need to be worrying about protein as much as they do. I never worry about it, but one thing that I do do, do do, <laughs> is to make sure that I consume a few higher protein sources throughout the day. And once you get used to eating these foods, it really just becomes part of your day and part of your lifestyle, part of your diet. You really don't have to think about them. So I'm gonna go over those with you guys now. These are the protein sources or the high protein sources that I consume most. All right, so you can see I've gone and put them all into a chronometer here and I've equaled them all out to 200 calories just to make it nice and even for the comparison. So starting with lentils, they're probably the highest source of protein of all the legumes and beans. 27% protein, 70% carbohydrates, and 3% fat. So as we look down at the rest of the nutrition here, you can see it's a great source of fiber. And you can see there 15.6 grams of protein, all the amino acids represented, yes, a couple of them are a little low, but we will make those up in some upcoming ones. Lots of folate in there, tons of iron, as you can see, and a good amount of zinc. Next, we're looking at black beans. Black beans are 23% protein, 73% carbohydrates, and 3% fat. So I'm just gonna pause here for a quick second and mention the carbohydrates because a lot of people get really freaked out when they start eating a plant-based diet because whole plant foods are just inherently rich in carbs. Well, most of them are anyways. 
So I get a lot of DMs from people who are struggling to transition as they are trying to keep their omnivorous macros. Well, this is just not gonna work, nor is it necessary. So you can see even beans, a proclaimed high protein plant food, is 73% carbohydrates. Carbs coming from whole plant foods don't make you fat and they're great fuel for the body and the muscles. It keeps energy high and muscles full of glycogen. And on many days, I even get over 400 grams of carbs coming from whole plant foods and never have trouble staying lean. All right, and now back to the beans. And also a great source of fiber. You can see there, 13.4 grams of protein and 200 calories, all the amino acids represented. Looking at chickpeas next. These are a little lower in protein, so 19% protein, 68% carbs, but as you can see, 13% fat, a little higher in fat than the black beans and the lentils. So a decent source of fiber, again, really good source of fiber. Um, just about 11 grams of protein in those 200 calories. Pretty even uh, amino acid spectrum there. Quinoa, <clears throat> this is another one of my favorites. It's not overly high in protein at 15%, 71% carbs, and 14% fat. But I do love this food, and it's a really easy sub. You know, if you want to substitute it instead of rice or something like that, it's going to have more protein in it than that. So again, all the amino acids represented. We're looking at tofu. Tofu is going to have a very different macronutrient ratio here. So very high in protein, 42% protein. Probably one of the highest sources of, you know, minimally processed to whole foods that you can be eating. 6% carbs and 53% fat. So it's quite high in fat. A lot of people don't realize that about about uh, tofu there but it is 24 grams of protein in the 200 calories super high and you can see all the amino acids also represented there and again not a huge huge um, contributor to our vitamins but again that's why we eat a bunch of other foods that are gonna have lots of vitamins in them and another good source of iron tons of calcium in that as well if your tofu is calcium set then it's gonna be a really high source of calcium so looking at tempeh Tempeh is 37% protein, 16% carbs, and 47% fat. So soybeans are just naturally high in fat. That's just how they are. It's pretty cool. Uh, so looking down at the protein, you can see again all the amino acids represented. And, you know, it's looking pretty similar here with the vitamins. And the last one we're going to look at is the hemp seeds. So this is 20% protein only 6% carbohydrates and 74% fat. So this is quite calorically dense. You can see in 200 calories, it's just about a quarter of a cup of hemp seeds. Uh, so definitely, you know, a lot richer in calories than any of the other ones we were looking at. But you can see here, a great source of omega-3s. So we got a three to one, omega-6 to three ratio, which is quite good. And uh, yeah, three and a half grams of omega-3 in that serving, so very good. And uh, all the amino acids represented, you can see methionine being the highest one here, and that was lower in some of the other foods that we were looking at. So as I mentioned before, these foods all complement each other. You don't have to worry about amino acid uh, pairing or, you know, making sure that you get each amino acid in every single food, every single meal. It's really not an issue. And I'm going to make a few quick honorable mentions here for some non-whole food sources of plant protein that I often consume. So bean pasta, this is a great one and there's more and more of these coming out on the market all the time. If you've never tried it, definitely get into it because they are awesome. And I wouldn't call it a highly processed food, but it is a processed food. It's usually made from bean or lentil flour and it's usually really high in protein, up to 45% for some. So it's a really easy sub if you want to sub out your regular wheat pasta or some rice pasta and you just basically cook it as you would any other pasta. Sometimes it cooks a little bit quicker, so just read the packaging. And yeah, you could, uh, you know, have it in soups, you could have it instead of spaghetti, all sorts of options. Mock meats are another option for us, and I just can't believe the sheer variety of these that there are out there nowadays. When I first went vegan, there were only a few of these on store shelves, and they generally were not very good. So while it's really great to see the increase in these, these definitely are a highly processed food and we shouldn't be consuming them all that often. If you do have them, definitely try and use them to accentuate an otherwise healthy meal and don't just have them as the entire meal. So mock meats can be really helpful for those transitioning from a meat-based or standard American diet, but we really want to try and move towards eating a mostly whole plant foods diet in order to receive the full benefits. So I couldn't make this video about plant-based protein without mentioning plant-based protein powder. 
And I know I'll get some comments like, well, if there's so much plant protein in Whole Foods, then why do you still have to have protein powder? <laughs> well, we could ask most meat-eating gym goers the exact same question. Protein powders can definitely be helpful to increase your protein intake a bit without having to add many more calories or bulk to your diet, but it is obviously not necessary for health or for building muscle. The one I consume is by Viva Life. It's fermented, so it digests really easily with no bloating. It mixes up really well. It's heavy metal tested, which is really important, and it tastes amazing, which is also important. Uh, I'm an ambassador for these guys, so I do have a discount code and affiliate link, which is in the description box down below if you are interested to learn more. So it is really important to remember that these are all really great sources that I've mentioned in this video here today, but we do get protein in everything that we eat throughout the day and it all adds up and contributes to a great range of amino acids and nutrients. So just try and remember to eat the rainbow at each meal for optimal health. All right, so I think that's probably it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope that you learned something and I hope that you worry a little bit less about protein now. So to summarize, if you are a plant-based athlete, you know, you definitely want to focus on getting a few higher protein sources in throughout the day. Uh, if you are trying to build muscle, you want to be eating in a slight caloric surplus. Uh, but for the average person, you know, as long as you're eating a variety of whole plant-based foods and you're eating enough calories, protein is really a non-issue. So if this video has helped you guys at all, definitely please hit that like button. It helps me out so much. It helps me with the algorithms and also comments are great too. And I'd love to know what some of your favorite protein sources are. So leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you want to see more from me and I'll see you soon with another video.